Welcome to this reflection as we begin Holy Week, a very special week in the church's year that's full of all sorts of drama, all sorts of meaning as we journey with Christ Jesus, his road to the cross. When preparing for what to share with you today, I was as ever struck by how, how much there is within this week, if we take a look at the Gospels, we immediately see what a large part of them is absorbed with the events that unfold. So I'm just going to dwell on some overall themes, beginning on Palm Sunday. I brought along a, an image here of the icon of Jesus entering into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, the words that are shared in the Gospels of this triumphant entry. We have deeply the fulfilment of Scripture. We're also perhaps conscious, not so easily, that Jesus was indeed reenacting what many kings would do in his day, ride on a donkey. There is within this day, as you can see in the crowd around, a deep sense of rejoicing and celebration as Jesus enters the great city of Jerusalem. It's such a contrast with all that is to come within this week. The triumphant entry, the crowd hysterical, the murmur of stones being crying out as they welcome their king. But quickly, the events turn and the week unfolds. We move through the week, we enter the drama, and as we do so, we have Jesus' moments spent with the disciples, moments in which he reflects with them on all that he knows lies before him. Perhaps that's most powerfully reflected on that night of Thursday, Maundy Thursday, where he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible that this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. In those moments shared with his chosen disciples, Jesus reflects in a very human way on the agitation that is within him, the grief that he faces. There's no apology from the Gospel writers of showing us this very human side of Jesus. The fact that he is agitated, fearful, grieving at all that lies before him. And as that moment approaches in that garden of Gethsemane, of his betrayal, of his being handed over into the way of Ill wicked men, we are immediately struck by this deep presence of evil. Jesus shares the beginning of the road of his passion here in that garden. Words would never do justice to what lies before. They can never encapsulate the wholeness of what is taking place in these moments, in this drama. Images are used of him entering a, a battle, of him fighting for us, fighting 
for humanity to be saved. That image is perhaps not the best to hold before us. Perhaps a better image that's used by John in his gospel writing is that of being born, of giving birth to a newness of life. When I reflect on uh, Holy Weeks that I've shared with varied conversations and various congregations, my thoughts perhaps go back some 33 years to my early days in ministry. And our eldest son was born just before we began Holy Week. In my youthfulness, I was encouraged to wear a blue rosette reading, I'm a new dad, as I walked the road into the uh, church as we processed, as many congregations do on a Palm Sunday. That same son is preparing for his uh, marriage this year. And it's conscious there of the how years go by, but also very conscious of that inner pride of being a father in that way. John, in his writing, seeks to explain to us what the passion event is all about and uses the image of the birth of a child. Reading from John 16, verse 20. Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. The woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Images there that uh, are used in John's Gospel as Jesus tries to point his followers toward the significance of this week, this holy week are images that we can relate to, the birth of a child, the anguish, the pain, and the grief, that sense that all those times are turned into a joy at the birth of a child. The newness that is here within this Holy Week is a newness that is there for each one of us to grasp does not take away the sorrow, the evil, the danger that we see in this world. But it does invite us to never let that have the final word. Brother Roger, the founder of the Teze community, always had a saying that I think for me is very important as we contemplate all the drama of this week and all the struggle that there is within it. Brother Roger would always invite us to dare to pray, to dare to sing, even in the face of human suffering. We are on that journey. We share that invitation. And in this week, we are deeply invited to find a space in our lives, we're taking upon us the realities of the world around us. We can dare to pray, dare to sing. 